Hello there YouTube. So, as soon as I'm taking a little bit of a break whilst I wait for my parts of the GGPO build to arrive, decided to do a previous work video. So what I have for you today is a guitar that was given to me by a very close family friend, Phil, along with another guitar that's still a work in progress, so that one will be a future video. What I have for you today is a Honor Arbor Series single cut, so Les Paul style guitar. Finding information out on this was really difficult. Um, I did manage to figure out that the body is actually made of plywood, which when you see it, you won't really be able to tell because the finish is done that well. But it's definitely apparent in the weight. So traditional Les Paul style guitar, you expect there to be a lot of weight to it. It was super light and I was really confused by it, but it was actually really fun to play. Did manage to find that the neck is made from rosewood, I believe. And it has a 7.25 inch radius and a 25 inch scale length. Now, when you think about this, this guitar has actually combined three different brands specs. So you've got a Gibson Les Paul style body, a Fender style uh, radius, and a PRS style scale length. So PRS and you know one of the few companies that use 25 inch scale length. Pickups themselves were two humbuckers, which I will detail a little bit later on. And it has your traditional Les Paul style controls, so two volume, two tone, and a switch on the top horn uh, on the top edge of the body. Uh, Phil was actually the person who introduced me to ACDC. Can't remember exactly what the first song was that I heard, but the moment that I heard Thunderstruck, I had to play guitar. And the reason why he offered him to me is because he hadn't played for years. The way he always referred to it, which made me laugh, was he's got sausage fingers, so he couldn't really play anymore. Uh, but he'd actually seen everything that I've done from my first kit build. And I had to remember a few times when I was working with my dad that he came in and was looking at what we were doing. So he knew I was gaining the knowledge to be able to put the work in that they needed. And I always admired these guitars because they were the first ones I'd ever seen before I started playing. And I was honoured that he asked me to take them. So I did everything I could to get them back to where they should be. Now, he was a heavy smoker, so they were just sat in the box for years. The second that I took him out, there was a very obvious nicotine damage, very similar to what happened to my Explorer. And the fretboard was severely dehydrated and the strings were completely gone. So I got up to work, getting everything cleaned down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the slideshow now talk over the process of uh, how I got it to clean. So here we have the photos of the guitar the day that I took it out of the box. I'd already removed the strings because you can see the amount of nicotine damage. They were gone. The fretboard obviously severely dehydrated but there was a lot of nicotine damage and gunk that I needed to get off. Didn't get it all though, it took me a few more attempts. And in this photo of the headstock you'll see how bad the nicotine damage was. So next I moved on to removing everything and getting it clean, which you'll see here. You can actually see the reflection in the finish. And the fretboard was a lot better. There was still a little bit of work to be done, as you'll probably be able to tell, but it was definitely a lot better. Even though this head shot here, the headstock is a little bit blurry, you can definitely see the difference. But you most definitely can see the difference in this photo because you can see the reflection of the light in the photo there. And I didn't take a photo of the back of the rest of the body, but this is the back of the headstock, and it is so much better. Whilst I was cleaning the guitar, as you've seen, I took everything off. Now, I don't always try and put EMGs in guitars. I do sometimes want to keep things original. Just thought about something. So, obviously, you saw the amount of nicotine damage. And I took everything out and these are the pickups and uh, this is even after me cleaning them you can still see 
a lot of the damage to him and also with the cracks through there wasn't really you know it wasn't really feasible for me to uh, use them however whilst i was cleaning everything obviously i took the control cavity off and inside there was a name and address and a phone number which i won't disclose in this video but there's a date of 8th of July 1989 and it was bought from Solo Music in Sheffield and then when I did the took the switch caveat cover off had the same name and phone number but it also said 1989 at the bottom not 100% sure if this is the previous owner or if it was actually a tech from that particular store but either way this is definitely the oldest guitar that I now own and I thought it was really cool finding this information out. Next uh, job that I did was starting to enlarge the pickup cavities. So, all right, I put the pickups away and I completely forgot that I needed to show you something about the pickups themselves. Completely on a whim, this one. Didn't expect to do this. Yeah, so, some more modern pickups have as well now, just these two sides here. Yeah, these are the ones that I took out that LTD. Now, you may have caught a glimpse of it, but I'll show you again anyway. So these ones, I'm trying to remember which way around they were. That way around. So as you can see with these ones, you've got one lug here, you've got two lugs here. So no matter what pickups I wanted to put in these, I would have had to do the modifications anyway. But as soon as I was modifying it, I decided to go with the MGs. So I do like I normally do. I took the A185 out of my wall because, as I explained in that video, it's the easiest guitar to take the strings off and take the pickups out. And it went from there. So I very crudely used a Tremel to remove the material on the left-hand side there. There is a bit of a mess underneath, but as you can tell from this photo here, the pickups around hide everything so it can't even tell what I've done. The control cavity was amazing because for a pleasant change, as you'll see in this slide here, I was able to fit my battery in no problem without having to write a battery box, which made me very happy. So this is the uh, front side after all the controls and everything were put in. Uh, that's how it looked without the control knobs and then I fitted the ivory control knobs which tie in really well with everything and then this is the headstock as well so you can see everything just ties in really well uh, next we've got a few glamour shots of it up on the wall so you can actually see it from bottom all the way to the top of the headstock i was really happy with how things turned out everything tied together really well there was however one last thing that I needed to change. The last few things that I needed to change on this guitar were the machine heads, but before I went through doing that, I've just looked through my project again, just to figure out exactly if I've got this script right. And I remember that I actually did my first uh, sort of fret job. Now, I've already previously stated fret work is something that I have no skills in. Uh, I tried learning online but it is that intricate and detailed you really need someone there with you teaching you how to do it. Uh, but what I decided to do was these frets were really really dull and I decided to actually polish them up and so what I did was I just basically covered them, you'll see in a second but you'll see, I covered them each side with masking tape and I just used some steel wool. Now Obviously, with it being the pickups being magnetic, wasn't really a smart choice, but the pickups weren't in the guitar when I did this. Um, I've actually pieced the project together a little bit different uh, in reality in comparison to what I was doing. But yeah, they, they brought them up really shiny. I'm not sure if it's going to show up very well on video, but I could really tell the difference. And what I did with that was I have another guitar that will eventually be another future build, uh, build video. But that was the same. Now, I've had that one since I was 15. I'm 32 this year. So I've had it for a very long time. It's never been 
professionally done or anything like that and I could see that they were very dull. So learning the process on this guitar meant that I knew how to get the fret shiny and then eventually what I'm going to do is I'm going to learn how to do the proper level and crown process. But that's enough divulging on that one. I started talking about the machine heads. So the stock machine heads weren't the greatest. Like they were, you know, very cheap. So the tuning stability was a severe issue. Rather than buying a set of growers like I would do normally, I decided to try a company that I stumbled across on Amazon called Geica. Now I've spoken about those guys before. This was my first experience with them. And it was one of the projects, uh, sorry, products that propped up randomly just within my search. And they're a little bit different shape to what my grows are, but they're only 24 quid with free shipping. So I thought, why not give them a try? Put this in perspective, the gold growers I have, sorry, these ones I bought for my first kit, a set of six of these, was £105. So obviously that's a major investment, even for the chrome set. So I thought, give this a try, and if the tuning stability doesn't really, you know, get better, I can go for a little bit more expensive one, try those out, and then if, if nothing else worked, then I would have got a set of growers. Luckily, that didn't happen, so the tuning stability is absolutely fantastic. Even if I have to alter it ever so slightly, it's very the odd few turn here and there, and they the turn of the gears as well. They feel amazing. I am really impressed, which is why I'm using these parts and a lot more of my guitars now. And luckily as well, they were straight dropping replacements, so it was brilliant. I'm hoping you can catch it on camera, but if you look at the fret on the right, and in comparison to the one that's in between the tape, you can see the difference. I couldn't believe I did all this just with some steel wool. These are the high-end frets, and you can see the shininess of them. And this is actually the look of the Geiger machine heads, which I hope you'll agree, look really good. I was really happy with how everything turned out. Like, everything tied together so perfectly. The ivory pickup surrounds, the control knobs, the switch tip, tied in perfectly to the binding on the neck, the black switch and black pickups tied in perfectly to the finish. And I was considering replacing the bridge and tail piece for a black one maybe, or something else, because it was really old and it looked a little bit of a mess. But because of the unique uh, fact, well, sorry, the fact that the radius is 7.25 inch, most replacement bridges are 12 inch radius, so, it wouldn't have really worked. but So I decided to just keep it as it was. The black A185 worked really well. Um, and I was contemplating ordering them again, because obviously I wanted to put those pickups back in my BC Rich. I was gonna order them in ivory. And then I was sat looking at a guitar, that I just the guitar that I just spoke about earlier, and it had a very different set of BMGs in it. And I just sat there, I looked at them, looked at this guitar and went, they would work so well on this guitar. So I switched them out. So I swapped the 8185 out for these EMG Retroactive Fat 55s. All right, so here we have it. This is my Honor Arbor Series single cut. And I'm at a little bit of a different camera angle. And there's a reason for that. A lot of the footage I recorded like three different sound demos and all of them I could just hear my strumming, or I could hear the guitar strings themselves and my hand over the amp. So what I've done is I've rearranged my room a little bit and I've now got it so that my amp are underneath. So at the very bottom I've got my Line 6 Fire 4, then I've got my orange cab and my Microterra, which eventually I will be using. I don't just always use the uh, Line 6 Fire 4. And I do apologize, but you may notice I'm trying to be bit further away from the camera but you will notice that you know at times my floorboards creak uh, but this was the best placement for everything so sorry just pulling my uh, pedal board a bit closer there we go and 
I could really tell the difference between the original 8185 that I put in this. It's all right, did that on purpose to take that out so I can get closer. I can really tell here the difference between the 8185 and these retroactive Fat 55s from EMG. And I mentioned originally that the ivory pickups around with the hardware and everything just tied in with the neck. Completely forgot. The entire body has a binding on it. Now, to say this is from 1989, there's not actually that much damage to it. There's like a little bit up here, and you just probably noticed it there. So a little chunk there. And something cool as well. So all my wiring and everything, including the battery box, uh, sorry, the battery is in there. Like, as you saw from the photos, like it fit perfectly. It's essentially the you know it's, it's arched up, so there was a lot of space in it. Anyway, I'm gonna put my lead back in because you know should have really just thought about that. One sec. There we go. Right. But because of the style of this guitar, I'm I'm feeling more sort of crunch or high gain settings rather than the true like normal distortion channel. So what I've done is I've got a setting on my line six that is I call it the ACDC lead setting. Uh, so it is more of that high gain rather than the true crunch tone. Uh, sorry, you're going to start a tone. And I'm hoping I've got all my levels right. So I have turned my amp up a little bit uh, so you can hear the guitar more. Gonna go through a few little riffs. I mean, I don't want to pull. I know I'm not playing a full song because. It's just awkward and this video is already quite long. I mean, I'm recording now and I'm at like three minutes just talking. So I'm just gonna play a few loops, play through a little riffs that I know and go from there. So I'll just, I'll just switch between the bridge and the neck pickup. But I'm gonna start on the uh, neck pickup. Uh, let's do this. Ooh, maybe not. Sorry, I wanna hear it loud, but uh, I can aim it so I'm not that like, cruel. distortion well if I roll my volume back see we all know it's there so these uh, pickups are actually able to completely negate my uh, majority of my crunch tone which is actually pretty cool but yeah I, I just love the sound of this guitar like I say with how it resonates as well I, I could go on for days, but yeah, that's pretty much the sound demo, so I'm going to carry on talking at the last part of this video, so talk to you in a sec. That's the story of this guitar. Uh, you may have seen the headstock of this one right here in the background of my videos. So it's always been there. Um, a friend of mine who helped me out when I was first starting my YouTube channel suggested that I turn these guitars around so that they headstocks were facing this way and the strings are exposed and everything else but this rack isn't the greatest I mean I'm just looking yeah you can see all this white cloth and this blue tape and it looks a bit of a mess there's a reason for that and I will explain it in a future video for the guitar that was the, re the catalyst behind that being changed the way that it is so obviously it's not the greatest quality rack in the world I started to grow my collection, do other things, and I bought the cheapest seven guitar rack that actually can fit eight guitars at the minute. So I'm planning on eventually upgrading it, but as I've previously stated, this uh, 
Destiny is doing first. But my plan for the sound demo is actually going to be a separate full cover video of me doing Love Is Only A Feeling by Darkness. I've always loved the Darkness for many, many years. And it's got some really nice riffs in it, got some really good clean tones, so you will get the full effect of and the full tone of this guitar. Keep your eyes peeled for that one. It is going to be quite a while until I got that done because, as I previously mentioned, I don't have an audio interface at the minute and I feel like doing a full cover video, you really need to have proper production behind it, not just record through a phone and an amp. <laughs> So, as I say, keep your eyes peeled for that one. If you did enjoy the video, though, please feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Share the video with your friends. Any help on growing the channel would be greatly appreciated. As always, my social links down in the description below. So I have Facebook and Instagram on there. Feel free to like, follow the page. That's pretty much it for this one. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next.